One of the proposed methods of sending a spaceship to another solar system is by use of what's known as a solar sail. What is this? How does it work? Are there any problems with its actual function? Well, at the basic level, a solar sail works in a similar way to the principle of a normal sailing vessel. The wind blowing from behind the vessel is captured by the fabric of the sail. The relatively large surface area that catches the wind exerts a force on the sail and pushes the sail forward. As it pushes the sail forward, it also pulls the vessel along, which is attached to the sail. However, there's no actual wind in the traditional sense in space. Instead, there's something called radiation pressure. The clearest example of radiation pressure can be seen in the tail of a comet. It always points away from the sun. The debris from the comet blown by the radiation pressure of a solar wind. In the case of a solar cell, instead of just blocking the movement by absorbing the light from the sun, the solar cell actually reflects virtually all the radiation hitting the cell back in the approximate direction from where it originally came from, thereby giving kind of twice the push that just absorbing the radiation would give. Invisible light is only part of the electromagnetic spectrum of radiation produced by our sun. All has energy. For example, the plants on Earth use for photosynthesis. This energy is reflected back in the direction it came from. Whatever reflecting it will feel a push as a result. It means if you shine a torch at a mirror, the mirror will actually be pushed slightly away from the torch. However, on Earth, very tiny forces involved are cancelled out by the mass of the mirror and friction. In space, these are less of an issue. The force is large enough even to move a traditional spacecraft like say, Mariner 10 because part of its mission was going past Mercury experienced a far greater push than the spacecraft further and out in our solar system would. This push on Mariner 10 was enough for the technician to use to alter the altitude of the spacecraft by changing the angles of the solar panels thereby saving on fuel. So what's needed for an effective solar sail? In order to capture as much energy as possible, the cell has to cover as large an area as possible. Ideally, the cell also needs to be as reflective as possible to make the best use of that energy. However, because the forces involved are relatively small, the cell also needs to be as light as possible. It also needs to be able to withstand any damage that may occur whilst in space, at least to prevent a hole in the cell from becoming a massive tear or rent in the cell. Other issue so ideally, the cell needs to be as smooth as possible in order to, again, achieve a good reflective surface. Many of these properties are fairly easy to achieve on their own, but in combination with other competing, often contrary demands, it's a real challenge. It gets even more difficult as the cell has to be launched from a rocket on Earth. The cell must be furled up inside that rocket, then deployed in space. It makes getting a smooth surface even more difficult. Even then, because of the size and scale of the cell, unfurling it too close to the surface of the Earth means that it will experience drag in the outer atmosphere. The cell really needs to be deployed at an altitude greater than 1,000 kilometers from the surface of the Earth. Then the cell has to be attached to the aircraft that's actually pulling it. Therefore, there needs to be a method for correcting any irregularities that the cell may cause, causing the craft to drift off course. The push of the spacecraft is also going to be greatest closer to the power source or the sun. As it gets further away from the sun or the power source, the push decreases. So does the acceleration. But by the time this comes an issue for travel within our solar system, the craft would already have been accelerated to a fairly significant velocity. However, there's a related problem as well. As the cell gets further out from the sun, it's experiencing less radiation actually hitting the cell. The cell itself would cool down, again could change the size and shape of the cell. Now whilst the sun is the obvious means of propulsion, it isn't the only way of using a sail like the solar sail. It's actually possible to use a satellite in orbit or a base station on Earth to focus energy onto the spacecraft, the possibility of significantly reducing the time required to travel to another star. However, all that's still in the theory stage. What isn't in the theory stage is the use of solar sails to explore our own solar system. The first craft to rely on a solar sail for its main propulsion 
seen planetary tight craft accelerated by radiation from the Sun, or Icarus, which was launched in 2010 by Japan. So that's going to be the major question. With all the technology behind solar cells is so difficult to get right, why bother with them at all? Well, thrust can be achieved by rockets in space. They're expensive and heavy. You turn each larger rocket to get them off the ground in the first place. By using the sun to power a spaceship, you can actually dramatically cut the cost of the interplanetary missions, even to the extent where using a solar sail powered ship to ferry cargo to Mars becomes economically viable, making the possibility of establishing a permanent base on Mars relatively easy and realistic in our lifetime as well as the more distant future giving us first practical method of interstellar travel by use of a solar sail.